Welcome to La Vida Rosa. I'm your host, Pinky, and today we're going to be talking about Love is Blind Season 4, Episode 7. So if you'd like to see more, then just stay tuned, like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, y'all, let's just go ahead and get into it with Zach and Bliss. Why does Zach get to have a second chance? Like, why does he get to go on here, propose to Irina? Usually when it doesn't work out, they just break up and they pretty much off the show until the reunion but he gets to come back with bliss because it didn't work out with Irene like why does he get that option I just don't understand that so after talking with Paul and deciding that it would be in his best interest to go ahead and settle for bliss he invited her over to cook dinner for her and bliss came like bliss now I'm gonna have to put it on you at this point why are you entertaining this man I mean, a sorry dinner too. He ruined the steaks pretty much. What was that on the carrots? Was that goat cheese on the carrots? And mushrooms and these sorry little shrimp. Like, I would have been headed for the door, personally, off the dinner alone. Once again, she tries to act like she's giving him a hard time. Oh, I just have to give you a little hard time. But she is completely enthralled and amazed and completely wants this man at one point he says yeah i have motion sensors so when my bedroom door opens it'll play harry potter who said that she was gonna go to your bedroom that was very weird and off-putting and once again that would make me want to leave mind you she's fully entertaining this conversation then they get up and start awkwardly dancing later on they went on a boat date i could see how they could get along better than him and irena but they still are very cringy and awkward and i you know i get it They're, this is their first time really getting to spend any quality time together so i can get how that can be a little awkward but they'd be bumping and fumbling around at some point during the date, he low-key was pressuring her for a kiss to the point where she's like okay fine and gave him a kiss and she was literally talking through that entire kiss like he was kissing her and she was like and then, and then, like talking like i was so uncomfortable y'all and then when he did kiss her like she barely reacted to the kiss i told y'all she was talking all the way through it and then he proposed like he thought that was a good moment to propose this is their third date you're supposed to be winning her back over we barely hear them have a conversation about that. He said he made a mistake, but I feel like he sh he's not as apologetic as he should be. We don't really get too much of him trying to win her over. Just that one little date where he cooked for her. And I guess he took her on his boat. Not to mention you just dumped her and proposed to someone else. And now you're proposing to Bliss again? To me, that was just a bit too much. You got a bit too much dip on your chips, sir. And even in his proposal, he was saying, we were always going to end up here. Y'all was going to end up there even if Irina gave you the time of day. Make it make sense, sir. So the episode left us on a cliffhanger there. I wanted Irina to take that ring and throw it in the ocean so bad. But we'll discuss what actually happened next episode. So let's move on to Brett and Tiffany. So he showed her his place. She has a roommate, so pretty much this will potentially be the place that they move into if they get married. Um, he's showing her around. He has a lot of like bougie tech items. Um, he has this big wall of shoes with, you know, sneaker boxes. He's a sneaker head. He really didn't have much closet space or a space for her to be able to work. So, you know, she's very like iffy about moving in. And he was like, well, I'm willing to move into a bigger unit if that's what we need. And that part of it's gonna work out. So later on in the episode, she ends up cooking for him and finances come up and she asks him about his spending habits because we know he missed the put it on, okay? We know he likes the finer designer things in life. And um, she basically was like, I know that you splurge and what's the most you've ever spent on an item? And he has this luggage, his carry on bag that he, you know, takes when he travels and it's twelve hundred dollars. And she was like, what? And I was like, what? He was like, but 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 I'll have it for a long time. She was like, you better. <laughs> um, she just wants to make sure that they budget. But she also was like, well, I wouldn't want anyone to tell me how to spend my money. 
basically she said she just want to make sure the bills are paid and he was basically like look i don't mind if we do 75 25 60 40. it seems like they'll be all right when it comes to finances he seems like he does very well for himself he's one of those people that look if i make the money i mean he's working with nike is he not if i remember correctly isn't he working with nike i feel like he makes a nice little coin so of course he's gonna have the sneakers of course he's gonna have like the designer things i think they'll be all right when it comes to that though it was nice to see the conversation because they had a very healthy back and forth about it so let's move on to jackie and marshall she's supposed to be meeting his sister she's gonna bring her husband and his niece she is so stressed out to meet his family i personally feel like she struggles with anxiety because i saw a lot of myself in her when she was going through this i know that feeling i know how that feels but she is the type to take it out on others she's like trying to breathe okay I need to go get air I need to go sit down who she's like you know going through it he says that she's in a mood and she tends to stay in a mood for longer than he likes and you know we saw her get snappy with him he's just trying to help she did say that you know she's dealing with a lot with her own family I, I read that she posted on her page that her dad has cancer and she financially is taking care of him her brother just got out of jail. He financially needs help as well. So she, that's the stress that she's under with her family on top of the fact that they are not exactly the most supportive of her doing this. So I get where a lot of that stress is coming from. And, you know, just I feel like she needs some better coping mechanisms with dealing with anxiety, possibly go talk with a counselor. Maybe there's something you could take to you know, sometimes it could be very heightened. And so maybe you need something to dull it down. He says, look, um, maybe we can reschedule this for another time. Or if you need me to stall, I could take him for a walk around the block. And she was like, no, no. So she, you know, puts on the mask and she ends up going through with it. Um, his sister comes in, literally his twin, literally his twin, the female version of him so pretty loved her waves and the you know colorfulness she had the cutest little girl cutest little family they came in so sweet so supportive you could tell that his family is very loving they discussed you know how they met he said that he knew that he wanted her from the jump he loved the fact that she inspired him to write poetry again because he hadn't done it in years and um when they asked her like what she likes about him he taught her how to be more grown. I don't know. That that threw that would have thrown me off. I ain't gonna lie. He taught you how to be more grown. Okay. And she also said he's kind of like the calm to her storm. She's very reactionary and he's very chill. And so, I don't know. I could tell that she was kind of putting on for company. Like, I feel like she was pretending in the moment. I, I do think that she wants a husband and that she thinks he's a good guy but I just don't feel the love between them. But his sister was very supportive, very sweet, you know, very encouraging. Um, but just the way that she was acting in that moment, I just, I was like, girl, I just, I just don't see it. I don't see it between them, I don't. So let's move on to Micah and Paul. On this episode, she met his mom. Literally, she was looking at herself in 20 years. Like they literally, Loki looked alike and they had a very similar personality very like kind of bubbly loud blonde hair type of personality and at first I couldn't see what he saw in Micah like why would he want to be with Micah but she act just like his mama so I completely get it now the mother basically said that they did a background check on Micah they only had her name but they plugged it in and looked her up I would have probably felt some type of way about that. I ain't gonna lie. Um, my eyebrow would have went up. But then again, I don't have anything to hide. It just, what? But the mom said that he's never had a potential fiance before. The meeting went great. The meeting went great. They got along well. If they do get married, they'll, you know, she'll be a great mother-in-law. I wonder how they're gonna feel when they see her flirting with Kwame though. Consistently. I, don't, I wonder how that's gonna change. But anyway, he took her to his apartment. The first thing we saw was the dead plant. <laughs> and um, he has two mismatched couches. 
One came from Craigslist and the other from the side of the road. None of the wood furniture in the house matched. Um, she was not impressed to say the least. I, I, I wasn't either. Um, she clowned his wardrobe. <laughs> now that's what she didn't have to do. She went through his wardrobe and basically clowned it. Um, and then they sat down and had a conversation about, you know, if they were going to live there or not, if they decided to get married. And she said it's not big enough for the both of them. And she would definitely want to get rid of it. You know, she said she has a place here in Arizona. Did she meant she had an apartment in Seattle and an apartment in Arizona or does she have a house in Arizona like I just don't understand like I didn't I didn't they didn't explain that well basically she wants to go back and forth between Arizona and Seattle because um, I believe they both work remotely so they have the freedom to do that and basically he was like I'm not saying no but no <laughs> he doesn't want to do that and she wants him to open up his mind and give it a chance so now let's move on to Chelsea and Kwame we're coming in from the cliffhanger of Kwame about to meet the father. I can't believe that Chelsea went on and on and on about being nervous about her dad meeting Kwame and how he was going to act and just like, I mean, stressing me out because I thought the man was going to be not liking Kwame because he black or something. Her dad comes in and he's literally the sweetest man. She literally sprung on her dad in that moment that they were engaged and he was just like happy for them like life is short he immediately gave his blessing I don't know that really irritated me that she made a huge deal out of that for absolutely no reason like I get maybe in the past your dad didn't like your exes but he couldn't have been that harsh on them for him to be so welcoming to Kwame maybe he just doing this for TV maybe he just didn't want to come off no way in front of the cameras but I don't know I was thrown off by that so then they visited Kwame's apartment he lives in Portland, which is like about three hours away. He wants to pick up his necessities, his Xbox, typical black man. We come in his apartment. First thing we see, dead plant. The cameraman be, <laughs> the cameraman was being so shady with that. We see a dead plant. We see disheveled laundry everywhere. We see an empty refrigerator. Um, he tells us that he sleeps on a couch. She pointed out the fact that there was lotion and a towel within three feet of each other. <laughs> and you just felt so free to sit on that couch. Um, yeah, his house was a little disheveled, but I feel like that's your typical standard bachelor pad. I just don't understand why these men come on this show and don't make the bed, don't think to pick up the laundry, at least put it in a laundry basket. You just left your clothes and dirty drawers all on the floor. You don't care if the camera saw that. You ain't gonna clean off the counter. You're not gonna organize your desk. You didn't do that before you left. Like, I'm not gonna dare let a camera catch my apartment looking like that. But he had no shame about it. She thought she would be a little bit more taken aback by the lack of cleanliness. But when they moved into their other apartment together he organized her underwear drawer so none of this phased her she feels like you know he'll get into the group of things when they you know are living together girl we'll see they discuss where they're gonna live once they get married right he does work remotely and like i said he lives in portland about two and a half hours away um he asked her would you ever think to move here basically she says no because her family is in seattle and she doesn't work remotely. That's what her job is. So, you know, he felt some type of way because he has friends and he has a routine here, but he claims he doesn't mind moving. And nothing wrong with compromise, nothing wrong with that at all. But clearly he felt some type of way about moving. And, you know, he acted like it was nothing, but I feel like it that meant more to him than he let on. And I wish he would have said something to her in that moment. So later we find out that Kwame has not told his mom about him being engaged. And um, he was concerned about her reaction. Chelsea was like, okay, this is personal between you and her. I don't, you know, want to be involved with this, especially our first time meeting each other. So she left the room. Um, the mother didn't even give clearance for her voice to be heard on that phone. That's how I knew she wasn't down for this 
at all. He said that she wasn't happy about this whatsoever. We couldn't hear her, but you know, by his responses, we could tell that she was not here for this at all. The mom says she's basically disappointed in him. She doesn't think he's doing the right thing. He seems like the type that really stifles his emotions and he's very passive. That's the end of this episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I'd love to hear your opinion. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Peace.